Hi, I'm Kelly, and I do research at Chroma. I recently finished work on generative benchmarking that I'll be sharing today. Let's first cover what benchmarking is. We can make an analogy to code tests in software engineering. A simple example is a unit test that checks if a sum of values is greater than a given value. Here we rely on deterministic logic, where given an input, we can expect a specific output. This makes the testing process reliable and perfectly reproducible under the same conditions. But when it comes to AI systems, things get fuzzier. We can go through an example of retrieval, which is the first step in many LLM part applications that use RAG. RAG refers to retrieval augmented generation, where a user query is first used to retrieve relevant documents, and then those documents are fed into the LLM to get a more grounded response. Imagine you're building a customer support app and have a basic question like, what is the return policy? And our model retrieves a few documents. We can see that the first two documents are relevant, but how do we test for that? There might be multiple relevant documents or no relevant documents at all. We also don't know ahead of time what users are going to ask. You can't hard code something like relevance, and this goes for most applications of AI. All these evaluations are subjective and context dependent, which you cannot write simple tests for. So instead, we use data to evaluate the system. You create a benchmark, which in our case is a set of example queries paired with relevant documents. For example, our previous query would match a document like, we accept returns within 30 days of purchase. With each given query document pair, we test for whether that query retrieves this relevant document. We do this across all our query document pairs and get metrics like recall and precision. So in AI systems, your data becomes a test suite. We can't reduce our tests down to Boolean assertions. We need to measure how well it performs across many real-world examples. To summarize, a benchmark gives us a standardized way to evaluate and compare AI systems. We're able to get unified metrics so we can generalize the broader scenarios. For retrieval specifically, the current industry standard for evaluating embedding models is the Massive Text Embedding Benchmark, or MTEP. If you see a release of any new embedding model, you see its MTEP score as the first indicator for how good that model is. It makes model selection really easy. If you just see that model A outperform model B on an MTEP task, then you would choose model A because the scores simply show that it's better. But unfortunately, it's not that simple. Just because a given model performs well on MTEP doesn't necessarily mean that it would also perform well in your retrieval system with your data. That's because these data sets for these benchmarks are generic. They don't comprehensively cover the kinds of domains that would show up in practice. If you take real use cases like internal knowledge assistants, customer support agents, documentation bots, etc., they work with data that's pretty different from something like a Wikipedia data set. Also, these public data sets often use polished query document pairs designed for question answering tasks. This contrasts from real production environments where you get queries that are often vague or only partially matched documents. You have to deal with a lot of ambiguity in real production data, which these public data sets do not always reflect. And finally, it's likely that most of these embedding models have seen these public data sets during training, so it's hard to differentiate whether the model is actually good at retrieval or if it's just memorized the task already. To address these limitations, we introduced generative benchmarking, a benchmark generated directly from your data. We use our corpus of documents and generate queries from them using an LLM with user-provided context. It makes the benchmark specific to your domain because we're using your data. It also deals with ambiguous queries because they're generated in a way that reflects real user queries. And lastly, using your own data will lead to unseen query document pairs for the embedding models, so we know that we're evaluating them for true retrieval. I'll go over what this looks like in practice using Chroma's documentation. We first filter our documents to identify those that are contextually relevant and informative. For example, we might have a document like this, which isn't very useful by itself. In order to do this, we feed each document and user-provided context into an aligned LLM judge. By alignment, we mean that we iterated on our LLM judge using human-labeled ground truth. We adapted this from EvolGen, which is a framework that aligns LLM judges with human preferences. LLM judges by themselves are not guaranteed to judge in the way that humans do, so we need some alignment with human judgment before we put that judge to use. Going back to your example, we have this context explaining what Chroma is and how this spot is used. And we feed that into our LLM along with the document. Then with our filtered documents, we move on to query generation. We feed each document, user-provided context, and example queries into our LLM. The context and example queries help to steer the query generation in a way that better reflects real user queries. Once we have our generated queries, we pair them with a document that they were generated from. Then we can perform the retrieval task with an embedding model. Because we have these query document pairs, we can evaluate models based on whether they successfully retrieve target documents to get metrics like recall. 
Recall is calculated by dividing the number of retrieved relevant documents by the total number of relevant documents. In our case, we have one relevant document per query, so recall at k measures how often our relevant document appears in the top k retrieved results. I'll walk through the same example in this notebook here. This notebook is open source, so you can use this on your own data as well. We'll first start off by installing and importing. And then we want to set our variables. We load in our chroma docs, and then we set our context and example queries. Context is just uh, defining what this spot does and how users might use it. The example queries are examples of what users might ask our technical support bot. We also define our collection name here. And if you want to use this on your own data, you just have to uncomment these lines and fill them in. We load in our API keys, set our clients, and then I'll walk through how you can create a Chroma collection. If you already have one, then you can just skip to 2.3, but I'll walk through this process um, just if you don't have a collection already. We'll set our IDs and documents, and then we'll first embed our documents using text embedding 3 large. But we also have other embedding functions defined in embed.py. You can also define your own embedding functions too. So after we embed our documents, we want to create a Chroma collection, and then we want to add to our collection. So we're just embedding our documents, created our collection, and then we add it to them. And then this will be if you already have a Chroma collection. You just have to load in your data like this. Next, we want to filter our documents for quality. And then we're going to use these two criteria here, relevance and completeness. So relevance just checks for whether your document is relevant to the context you provided earlier. And completeness just checks for the overall quality of your document. So we'll define those, and then we'll run this function to filter our documents. Now that we have that, uh, we can filter out our uh, documents that our LLM judged as irrelevant. And we can view the results here. So you can see that this is an example of a document that passed. And we can see that this is an example of a document that failed. Now we'll move on to generating our golden data set of queries with our filtered documents. We'll use the context and example queries that we defined earlier. And all we have to do is just run this cell here to create our golden data set. OK, now that our golden data set is generated, you can see some of the queries that we generated here. And then we're going to move on to evaluation. We're going to set our queries and their IDs, and then embed our queries using the same embedding function from earlier. And then we're going to define a data frame for our query and document matches. We're going to use this for evaluating retrieval. And then we're just going to use that to run our benchmark. And we get these results for text embedding 3 large on our Chroma Docs data set. Now you also want to save your results so that you can compare them um, maybe across multiple embedding models. So we're going to save that here. And I actually ran this across three other embedding models. So we can head over to this notebook here, where we can compare their performance. First, we want to install and import again. And then we want to load in our results. So you can see here that I've already ran this on OpenAI Small, Gina, and Voyage as well. So we'll load them in and then create a combined data frame of all our metrics. And then we can just run this to get a visualization of how our models compare. So you can see here that Voyage 3 Large performs better uh, compared to our other models. So we probably want to use that. And as I said before, this notebook um, and everything in here is all open source. So you can run this on your own data and compare across as many embedding models you want. Synthetic data set generation is not necessarily a novel technique. It's very widely used, and a lot of research has been done on this as well. However, there is limited work in investigating how well the synthetic data represents the ground truth, which in this case would be the real user queries in production. We could simply give an LLM all our documents and prompt it to generate queries. We can also try generating multiple queries per document for diversity. There is a lot of methods for query generation, but the question remains in how well these methods reflect your actual use case. So the focus of our work is on representativeness. We use real data from a production use case, Waste and Biases Documentation Bot. And we use those ground truth user queries to compare how representative our generated queries are. We aim to have a set of generated queries that best reflect real user queries, because only then can you be confident that you're actually measuring what you want. 
You can have a very complex and thorough query generation method, but if it's not representative of what your users are asking, then you're not really measuring anything valuable with your benchmark. I'll walk through some of the results demonstrating this representativeness. We start our work with public data sets from MTEB, mainly for the purposes of validating that we can generate queries representative of a given ground truth. Here, the ground truth refers to the queries from the original data set. We first try a naive query generation method where we prompt your LLM with only the document and tell it to generate a relevant query. We found that across all the nine data sets we used, our LLM generated identical or near identical queries to the ground truth, which highlights an important finding that LLMs have seen a good portion of these public data sets before, so there's always a chance that they will generate the ground truth query. If we use this method, then there will be cases where we compare identical queries to each other. We want to demonstrate that new unseen generated queries are representative, so we need a more tailored approach. This time, we prompt your LLM with both the document and ground truth query, prompting it to generate a query distinct from the one provided. With our ground truth queries and generated queries, we perform the retrieval task to see how the metrics compare. In this example, with the English Wikipedia dataset, we see that we get the same ranking of embedding models across both query types. For example, Text Embedding 3 Large has a higher recall at 1 compared to the mini LLM model, regardless of whether we're looking at the ground truth queries or generated queries. We also validate representativeness with real production data from weights and biases. We use documents and user queries from their technical documentation bot, where users would ask questions about how to use weights and biases, how to fix certain errors, etc. In this case, we use a query generation method I explained previously, where we feed in the context and example queries to our LLM. And we also compared that with a naive generation strategy where we only feed the document into our LLM without any context or examples. We see consistent results where our generated queries maintain the same ranking of embedding models. We also see that our ground truth queries and generated queries with context and examples have lower recall scores compared to our naively generated queries, which is interesting to see because it's telling us that as our queries get more realistic, our models perform worse. Another finding here was that our results contradicted MTEP scores. So Gina Embeddings V3 outperformed Text Embedding 3 Large on all English MTEP tasks. But we see here that Text Embedding 3 Large actually performs better. This reinforces our core claim on how performance on public benchmarks such as MTEP does not always generalize to real world performance. This doesn't necessarily mean that Text Embedding 3 Large is always superior to Gina's model, but it illustrates how performance rankings can shift depending on the specific use case. There are some interesting directions for future work that can build upon this. One is incorporating production traffic to improve both your benchmark data set and corpus. Our generative benchmarking method provides a good starting point when you don't have any logged user queries to start with. But with real user queries, you could iterate on your generated queries for better alignment. It would also be helpful for identifying knowledge gaps. If you consistently have queries which do not have relevant documents in your corpus, then you can update your corpus based on that. So some future work around automatically detecting this would be useful. Also, work around improving corpus quality and expanding generative benchmarking to other domains will be valuable. We've covered why benchmarking is important and why our method specifically is practical if you want to evaluate your retrieval system in a realistic manner. We've open sourced all our code to use this on your own data. We have the repo available on our GitHub. We also released our technical report that goes much deeper into the research, expanding on what we talked about here. Finally, Chroma's cloud service is now available. You can sign up and get started in less than a minute. Thank you.